Excellences, as we are about to program any moment. Now it's taking place here in Dar es Salaam. We hope that your journey has been smooth, and we hope that today will be as productive. We are gathered here this morning to celebrate the achievements of our countries that have made to date in improving human capital and to exchange effective approaches and commit to accelerating progress and contribute. You feel inspired and wish to share anything that you've tags invest in people. It's also on the site should you want to see the hashtag invest in people. But you can also want, if you want to also share your thoughts through a quick video interview to be featured on social media, you're also welcome to do so through our media booth outside. When the heads of states have gotten inside, I will request all of us to remain standing and we shall be led by the brass band, as I'd mentioned earlier, to sing the Tanzanian national anthem, the East Africa community anthem, and the African Union anthem. And then we shall commence officially our program in the venue. But for now, may I kindly continue to request those of us standing to please take our seats. The camera to slow your movement now. If your mobile phone has not been put on silence or vibration mode, kindly remember to do so. And momentarily, we shall commence our program. The heads of states will be ushered in by the brass band and I will give the signal to that activity. In the meantime, DJ, thank you.
safe environment keeps Ama free from harassment, violence, and conflict. Fortunately, her family doesn't have to worry about paying school fees. Over the last decade, secondary education enrollment has more than doubled in the region, but allowing more students like Ama to graduate requires more investments. With concerted efforts, 4.6 million more girls could attend secondary school by 2025 in Western and Central Africa. Ama passes secondary school with flying colors. She attends a university that is affordable, flexible, and offers high quality skills, preparing her for future careers. She learns about the impact of climate change and its effect on her community, inspiring a career in the green economy. Entering the workforce, her family is proud of Ama's accomplishments, especially her mother, who decides to continue her education through lifelong learning programs. With smart investments, an additional 3 million people can access tertiary education by 2025. Unfortunately, many children don't have opportunities like Ama's. For this to become a reality for every child, governments need to invest in education reforms, improving lives and fostering economic growth. We need to act now. Join the World Bank Education Coalition for a Western and Central Africa, where all girls and boys arrive at school ready to learn, acquire quality education and enter the job market with the skills that become productive and fulfilled citizens. Say hello to Ama, a curious little girl. Say hello to Ama, a curious little girl who loves to learn and today is her first day of school. Ama's family prepared her for school by providing her with proper nutrition and an engaging home environment. Success for Ama starts in primary school, where good roads for transportation, clean drinkable water and toilets help her focus on learning. Ama's teacher has a major impact on her students but must be supported with training and resources. Because Amma's classroom has regular learning assessments, Foundation, she's off to a new secondary school nearby, recently built by her community and school fees. 
Over the last decade, secondary education enrollment has more than doubled in the region, but allowing more students like AMA to graduate requires more investments. With concerted efforts, 4.6 million more girls could attend secondary school by 2025 in Western and Central Africa. AMA passes secondary school with flying colors. She attends a university that is affordable, flexible, and offers high quality skills, preparing her for future careers. She learns about the impact of climate change and its effect on her community, inspiring a career in the green economy. Entering the workforce, her family is proud of Ama's accomplishments, especially her mother, who decides to continue her education through lifelong learning programs. With smart investments, an additional 3 million people can access tertiary education by 2025. Unfortunately, many children don't have opportunities like Amas. For this to become a reality for every child, governments need to invest in education reforms. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, good morning or good afternoon. My name is Idris Elba. Please excuse my, uh, my dress, my informal setting. I come to you from my home in London. I wish I was there. But at the outset, I'd like to wish and congratulate HE President. At the turn of the next century, one in every four human May request, will be please, all of us to so stand up the as the heads of states are about to in get into the venue. Please, may we all stand up. Okay, kindly be seated for another couple of moments. Um, <laughs> thank you. They will be here definitely in no time. And um, thank you for your patience. Thank you very much. I think it's healthy to have a laughter in the morning, so thank you so much. Good afternoon. My name is Idris Elba. Please excuse my, uh, my dress, my informal setting. I come to you from my home in London. I wish I was there. But at the outset, I'd like to wish and congratulate HE President Samir Suhulu Hassan for conveying this critical meeting in collaboration with the World Bank Group. At the turn of the next century, one in every four human being will be an African. So the importance of investing in our people could not be more urgent. I believe it was Sir Ken Robinson who said, human resources are like natural resources. They're often buried deep. You have to go looking for them. They're not just lying around on the surface. You have to create the circumstances where they show themselves. And it is for this reason that I am very proud to lend my voice and presence to the conversation taking place here and advocate for increased resources towards upskilling African youth. This is a critical mission that will enhance their employability, drive innovation and contribute to the continent's economic growth. I wish to call upon all of us to aggressively invest in digital literacy, the 
digital literacy of our youth by ensuring access to computers, to the internet, training in basic computer skills, coding, data analysis. Additionally, our youth need vocational training and apprenticeships to promote practical skills in areas such as carpentry, plumbing, um, electrical, agriculture, and hospitality. All of these work very well with my industry. All of these offer valuable hands-on experience. We have to cultivate the entrepreneurial mindset of our youth and support them in realizing, in them realizing their potential. Africa's creative cultural industry um, has the potential to generate $20 billion and create 20 million jobs every year. I think it is high time that we shift gears into action and forward and focus on implementation, 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 which is why I look forward to working with Tanzania on the film studios that we have committed to. We should all be working together to accelerate the goal for a brighter Africa for all. Thank you so much for listening. Please enjoy your time. May we kindly stand up, brass band. Can we put our hands together as the walk-in? Excellencies, may I request you to remain standing as the brass band leads us into the anthems for Tanzania, East Africa community, and the African Union.
kindly be seated. <clears throat> Your Excellency Samia Sulu Hassan, President, Republic of Tanzania. Your Excellency Philippe Jacinto Nyusi, President, Republic of Mozambique. Your, Pres Your Excellency Andy Rejolina, President, Republic of Madagascar. Your Excellency Dr. Lazarus McCarthy Chakwera, President, Republic of Malawi. Your Excellency Carlos Manuel Villanova, President, Democratic Republic of Sao Tome and Princip. Your Excellency President William Ruto of the Republic of Kenya. Your Excellency Dr. Julius Maadabio, President, Republic of Sierra Leone. Your Excellency Dr. Hussein Ali Mwinyi, President, Revolutionary Government of Zanzibar. Your Excellency Hussein Abdelgabi Akoi Agani, Vice President, Republic of South Sudan. Your Excellency Mariam Chabi Talata, Vice President, Republic of Benin. Your Excellency Jessica Rose Appel Alupo, Vice President, Republic of Uganda. Your Excellency Molate Nalumango, Vice President, Republic of Zambia. Your Excellency Cleopas Dlamini, Prime Minister, Kingdom of Eswatini. Your Excellency Amza Abdibare, Prime Minister, Federal Republic of Somalia. Your Excellency Gervais Ndira Kobuka, Prime Minister, Republic of Burundi. Your Excellency Dimeke Mekonen, Deputy Prime Minister, the Federal Republic of the Democratic Republic of Ethiopia. Your Excellency Olavo Evolino Garcia Correira, Deputy Prime Minister, Republic of Cabo Verde. Your Excellency Abdurrahman Abdulazak, Chair, Nigeria Governors Forum. Honorable Mohamed Chamfik, Minister of Finance, representing the President of the Union of Comoros, who is also the Chair of the African Union. I would also like to recognize the presence of Madam Victoria Kwakwa, Vice President for East and Southern Africa of the World Bank. I would also like to recognize the presence of Mamta Murthy, Vice President, Human Development at the World Bank. I would also like to recognize the pres presence of Mama Grassa Michelle, Deputy Chair of the Elders, Heads of Delegations from Algeria, Angola, Botswana, Comoros, Djibouti, Democratic Republic of Congo, Egypt, Gabon, Ghana, Ivory Coast, Libya, Namibia, Nigeria, Rwanda, Seychelles, South Africa, Togo, Tunisia and Zimbabwe. Honorable ministers present here, permanent secretaries, excellencies, ambassadors, high commissioners, heads of international organizations accredited to Tanzania, distinguished delegates, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm good morning to you all. I'm honored to welcome you all to the Africa Human Capital Heads of State Summit, which aims at celebrating our country's achievement in improving human capital, to exchange effective approaches, and to commit to accelerate progress to equip young people to perform to their full potential to contribute to the economic prosperity of our beautiful continent. Your Excellency, it is now my pleasure to invite and pass the floor to the World Bank's Vice President for Eastern and Southern Africa, Dr. Victoria Kwakwa, for a welcoming address.
Can we put our hands together for Dr. Victoria Kwaka as she comes for our welcoming address? Thank you. Your Excellency Dr. Samia Suluhu Hassan, President of the United Republic of Tanzania, Your Excellency's Heads of State and Government represented here today, Your Excellency's Vice Presidents, Deputy Prime Ministers, Excellencies, heads of delegations, honorable ministers, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. And warm greetings to all of you. It's a great pleasure and honor to be here together at the inaugural Africa Human Capital Heads of State Summit. I want to thank you, President Samia, and your government for your gracious hospitality in hosting the summit in partnership with the World Bank. Thank you. I'd also like to recognize the kind technical and financial support of our partners, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation the Global Finance Facility, the Government of Korea, and the MasterCard Foundation. I want to thank your excellencies for coming together to support building a coalition and adopting a consensus on human capital in Africa. We're here with a common and urgent concern and a common sense of responsibility. Africa is facing a human capital crisis. Even before the COVID-19 pandemic, a child born in sub-Saharan Africa could expect to be only 40% as productive as she would be with full education and full health. An intuitive indicator of the crisis is the learning poverty rate, which measures the share of children who cannot read and understand a simple text by age 10. In Sub-Saharan Africa, about 89% of children are learning poor. This means that almost nine out of 10 children are not acquiring the foundational literacy required for further learning. It is no surprise then that for education alone, at the midpoint of the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals, we're seriously off track in Africa. Some indicators, such as primary school completion, which has increased from 46% in 2000 to nearly 64% in 2021, and youth literacy, which stands at nearly 78% as of 2021, have the potential for recovery. However, others such as access to quality early childhood development and preschool for all, which stands at about 50%, will need a significant and concerted effort to be achieved. This summit is an important opportunity to come together to discuss what we can do to improve human capital outcomes and achieve results at scale. For African nations, the cost of inaction will be extremely high and potentially destabilizing. Without navigating this human capital crisis successfully, African societies and economies risk being trapped in a detrimental cycle of stagnant growth, soaring poverty rates, and increasing inequality. This situation could potentially escalate the drivers of fragility and conflict as uneducated and low-skilled youth 
grow increasingly disillusioned. There is also a lot at stake for the global community. By 2050, Africa will represent almost 40% of the children 0 to 14 years and a quarter of the working age population in the world. Improvements in Africa mean improvements for the world. Improving human capital is not for the faint of heart or the impatient. If you allow me to be blunt, human capital is less visible than building a road and requires a longer term commitment and investments. Yet when we are successful, we transform the lives of generations of children and youth and the economic return is even higher. And change is possible. During this crisis, we have already experienced success and huge potential. The following examples that I will give are not exhaustive, but illustrate that progress is happening and continues to be possible. On the early years, countries like Rwanda are among the few to meet the Sustainable Development Goal target on malnutrition. It was done through efforts that included an innovative early childhood development intervention, a combination of home-based and community-based modalities. Rwanda dramatically increased its access to early childhood services in only two years, from 17% in 2020 to 62% in 2022. The stunting rate is also coming down. When it comes to learning outcomes, Kenya stands as a testament to the power of steadfast commitment to challenging reforms, ranging from curriculum development, provision of textbooks, and effective teacher management. Over the course of many years, through consistency and focus, the country has experienced a decade of substantial progress in learning including a 50% improvement in reading. In Africa, teacher salaries account for more than two thirds of government spending in education. Edo State in Nigeria sets a good example of how to increase efficiency of spending, leveraging technology and private sector partnerships. An, an innovative program equips teachers with tablets and scripted lessons for real-time progress tracking and continu continuous improvement. An extensive monitoring system fine-tunes resource allocation and has boosted teachers' attendance rates dramatically to 83%. Edo State demonstrates that even on limited budgets, education can deliver maximum value by efficiently harnessing teachers' potential. Innovations through partnerships across sectors have also enabled and accelerated the pace of change. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, increase, increase financing for education and partnerships with non-state providers, reduced the cost of education, and resulted in 3.7 million additional students enrolled in public primary schools in a short period of time. Empowerment of women and girls is critical for human capital. Zambia shows us how to use social protection programs to protect the human capital of girls. They mitigated the effects of the rising food prices through cash transfers provided through digital payments that enabled 59,000 girls to access secondary education. And we know that representation matters. The 20 member countries participating in the Africa Centers of Excellence Initiative across Sub-Saharan Africa share our commitment to creating a network of women leaders and innovators in STEM and education fields. Under the leadership of our host, Her Excellency President Samia, Tanzania has also made enormous strides in ensuring that every child, and particularly adolescent mothers, can complete secondary schooling. The country is tuck
the country is tackling this challenge in a holistic and coherent way. They are preventing dropout by expanding the school network and implementing an innovative Save Schools program. At the same time, their new continuation policy is opening the doors of the formal education system to students who have already dropped out and young mothers. As a result, between 2018 and 2022, the number of girls enrolled in lower secondary school increased by 400,000 students, equivalent to a 35% increase in enrollment. We celebrate all these successes. Achieving the transformational changes urgently needed in our education system will require far greater funding. Sub-Saharan African countries currently spend about $280 purchasing power parity for every primary school student compared to $1,500 in purchasing power parity terms in middle-income countries and about $8,400 in high-income countries. These large differences show that no country in sub-Saharan Africa is likely to effectively address the growing demand for education without significantly increasing their investments in human capital. However, more financing will not solve the problem of at hand unless enhanced with a much more effectively, given their teacher salaries are normally the biggest component of education spending. Reforms that make teachers more effective are key to improving the overall efficiency of the sector. Systems need to reward teachers that improve and sustain better teaching practices. The education sector also needs to tackle low teacher motivation and high rates of absenteeism. Having more than 15% of teachers absent from school or not teaching is unacceptable. Beyond this, Ministry of Education need to build their capacity to deploy teachers equitably, ensure they have the teaching and learning material they need to do their jobs effectively, and provide the support they need to improve their teaching skills. Tackling these challenges successfully will improve sector efficiency and are just as critical as mobilizing more funding if national and continental goals for education are to be met. As a development partner, we at the World Bank stand with you at this time of human capital crisis. In addition to the Africa Human Capital Plan that we launched in 2019, we have prepared a new strategy for education in Western and Central Africa and an operational business plan for the Eastern and Southern African countries. We have also increased our financing for human capital. And our commitment to education spans several sectors, including interventions in health, social protection, water and sanitation, transportation, and other sectors that contribute to improving access and quality of schooling for all. Nevertheless, it is your national strategies, your ideas and financing that are the foundation of future progress. It is essential that we formulate a clear and actionable plan that explicitly outlines what it will take to achieve the goals. To make progress, we must break the silos and foster collaboration amongst all stakeholders. We need to develop a platform for action that transcends sectoral boundaries and unites government agencies, domestic partners, and external allies, including the pivotal private sector. That is why events like this one provide a critical opportunity for co cooperation and collaboration. Over the last two days, we had so many creative ideas and inspirational examples of what can be done to accelerate progress on building human capital. We need to capitalize on the wealth of local ideas and solutions to address the challenges in Africa. We at the World Bank would like to convene a team of education experts from the continent and policymakers to find how to build on the successes that I've mentioned to take them to scale and to propose new ideas and solutions. We would work with regional bodies, individual governments, and our development partners to strengthen and sustain this team 
and provide global knowledge from other regions to plan and deliver tangible solutions at scale, accelerating progress in human capital development. We will also review our human capital plan to reflect the Dar es Salaam Declaration with political will and leadership and commitment from all of you the highest level we can together achieve our vision with our collective leadership to make human capital the cornerstone of our country's development strategies i'm confident that we will bring build strong coalitions and allocate the needed resources to ensure a bright future for africa a future where all girls and boys reach their full potential, grow up well-nourished and ready to learn, attain real learning in the classroom, and enter the job market as healthy, skilled, and productive adults. I want to close with a, a phrase that one of the panelists just said yesterday. Yes, Africa can. There is no more time to waste. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Kwakwa, for your inspirational words and for the work that you and your team, together with the government of Tanzania, have put to make this summit a great success. Your Excellency, I would now like to invite to the podium Honorable Dr. Stegomena Tax, Minister of Foreign Affairs and East Africa Corporation of the United Republic of Tanzania, for her introductory remarks. Can we put our hands together as she comes to the podium? Your Excellency Dr. Samia Slu Hassan, President of the United Republic of Tanzania, Your Excellencies, Heads of State and Government and uh, Representatives, Dr. Victoria Kwaka, World Bank Regional Vice President for the Eastern and Southern Africa, Honorable Ministers, Excellencies, Heads of uh, International Organizations and uh, Representatives, Excellencies, Heads of uh, Diplomatic uh, Missions, partners from the private sector, distinguished delegates, media representatives, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great honor and privilege to stand before your excellencies to deliver introductory remarks on this special and momentous occasion of the 2023 Africa Heads of States Human Capital Summit with a theme accelerating Africa's economic growth, boosting youth productivity by improving learning and skills. That is taking place here in Dar es Salaam, the hub of peace. Your Excellencies, we gather here in recognition of the pivotal role that human capital plays in shaping the present and future of our African societies and economies and the global communi community at large. Human capital is defined as the knowledge, skills, abilities, and the health of individuals, and is the wealth of any nation. It is the driving force behind innovation, productivity, and the sustainable development. Investing in people is not only a moral imperative, but also an economic necessity. May I therefore take this opportunity to thank Her Excellency, uh, Dr. Samia Slu Hassan, President of the United Republic of Tanzania for her visionary decision to host this summit and the World Bank. And the World Bank for affording the United Republic of Tanzania an opportunity to host it. On this note, may I, on behalf of the President of the United Republic of Tanzania, welcome Your Excellencies and the all distinguished delegates to Tanzania 
and in particular to this uh, very important summit. Your Excellencies, the journey to the African Human uh, Capital Summit started on the, on, in April uh, 2023 when the United Republic of Tanzania accepted to host the summit. Preparations were then launched by Her Excellency Dr. Samia Sluhassan, the President of the United Republic of Tanzania, on the 19th of May 2023 in this uh, same venue, during which stakeholders were invited to join the Government of Tanzania in preparing for the summit. We are grateful that the invitation sent by Her Excellency the President of the United Republic of Tanzania to African heads of state and the government, international partners and other stakeholders have been honored graciously. The summit is being attended physically by more than 1,000 participants representing 44 governments and the other partners and the virtual attendance through various platforms has also enabled extended participation of about 1,000 uh, 300 uh, participants, making a total of 2,300 participants attending this summit. The United Republic of Tanzania <laughs> values your attendance and the participation, Your Excellencies, and they, and they thank the World Bank for partnering with the United Republic of Tanzania to host this important summit in Tanzania. This positive response is a testimony of uh, the seriousness attached to human capital development and uh, the role it plays in boosting socio-economic growth of our continent. The summit comes at a time when the continent continues to implement Agenda 2063, aiming at transforming Africa into a global powerhouse. To achieve this aspiration, human capital development is a critical component requiring massive and the coordinated efforts by African countries and other partners. This summit is therefore a significant step towards achieving Agenda 2063 and also our pursuit to accelerate the realization of sustainable development goals. The summit provides a platform for sharing knowledge, experiences, and come up with innovative strategies to unleash intense, um, the power of human capital and the concrete commitments. With intensive preparations and commitment, as my sister, uh, Madam Victoria said, the political commitment that we have uh, witnessed, we are set for a very successful summit. With these introductory remarks, it is with great humility that I beg to invite Her Excellency, Dr. Samia Slu, Hassan, the President of the Natural Republic of Tanzania, to address uh, the summit. Karibu sana, Mwishmua Rais. Asante, number two. I request uh, the delegates to use their translation uh, tools because I'm going to talk on uh, my national language. Washmo Kuanchi, now Akilishi, or Kuanchi. Washmo Makamoraisi, Mliopo. Mheshimiwa Dr. Hussein Ali Mwinyi, Rais wa Zanzibar na mwenyekiti wa Baraza la Mapinduzi, Mheshimiwa Mawaziri wakuu mliopo, wakuu wa misafara, Mheshimiwa Mawaziri, Makamu wa Rais wa Benki ya Dunia, Victoria Dr. Victoria Kwakwa, ambaye ni makamu wa Rais wa Southern Eastern and Southern Africa. Uh, pia natambua uwepo wa Dr. Mamta Mothi, Vice President for Human Capital Development in the World Bank, na ujumbe wote wa Benki ya Dunia mlioko hapa. Washima mabalozi na wakilishi 
wa mashirika ya kimataifa wawakilishi wa sekta binafsi pamoja na wataalamu mliopo wageni walikuwa mabibi na mabwana habari za asubuhi Nio furaha kubwa kuwakaribisha nyote nchini Tanzania lakini kuwakaribisha katika ukumbi huu wa mkutano Ninamshukuru sana Mwenyezi Mungu kwa kutujalia fursa hii adhimu ya kukutana hapa ili tuweze kujadiliana na kufikia maazimio kuhusu mada hii muhimu na nyeti kwa maendeleo na mustakabali wa bara letu la Afrika maendeleo ya rasilimali watu Tulipokea kwa heshima na fahari kubwa fursa ya kuwa mwenyeji wa mkutano huu muhimu na adhimu na kwa kipekee kabisa nitambue na kupongeza kazi kubwa iliyofanywa na serikali kupitia wizara zetu za fedha na wizara mambo ya nje pamoja na benki ya dunia na vile vile nitambue mchango mkubwa uliotolewa na wadhamini katika kufanikisha mkutano huu hakika mmeutendea haki mkutano huu kwa maandalizi mazuri sana Natambua tuna wageni wengi waliosafiri masafa marefu kujiunga nasi leo na nitumie fursa hii kuwapa pole kwa machovu ya safari na kuwakaribisha Tanzania. Natumai imepokelewa vyema na mmekirimiwa kwa mila na desturi zetu za kitanzania karibuni sana. Vile vile nitumie fursa hii kwa shukuru waheshimiwa viongozi na washiriki wote kwa kubali mwaliko wangu na kuungana nasi katika mkutano huu muhimu unaobeba kauli mbiu inayosema kuchochea ukuaji wa uchumi Afrika kuongeza uzalishaji wa vijana kupitia mafunzo na ujuzi yani accelerating Africa's economic growth boosting youth productivity by improving learning and skills washimwa viongozi Tunakutana leo kujadili ajenda ambayo ndiyo moyo wa mataifa yetu. Uwekezaji katika rasilimali watu, hususan vijana. Mkutano wetu huu wa leo utaamua ni aina ipi ya uwekezaji unahitajika ili kuleta tija na kuchochea maendeleo ya bara la Afrika. Hakuna muda mwingine sahihi wa kujadili haya zaidi ya huu tulionao kwa kipindi cha zaidi ya mwongo mmoja sasa bara la Afrika limepitia ukuaji na uimarikaji mkubwa wa uchumi au uchumi zake katika sekta tofauti hali hii ya ukuaji wa uchumi ilifanya bara kuja na misamiati kadhaa ikiwemo Africa is rising lakini pia it's african century misamiati hii ilitokana na vuguvugu la harakati mbalimbali mbali zizo kwa zikifanyika ili kulikuwa mua bara letu la Afrika kutoka kwenye utegemezi wa kiuchumi kulifanyika jitihada za maksudi kuhakikisha bara hili linajenga uchumi zake kwa kutumia rasilimali zake ili kuweza kujiletea maendeleo kwa baadhi ya nchi na kanda maendeleo haya ila kwa baadhi ya nchi maendeleo haya kuonekana au yaleonekana kwa kiasi kidogo ni jambo la kusikitisha kuwa kwa baadhi ya nchi kwa huu wa uchumi haujachangia katika kuhakikisha wanajenga uchumi jumuishi wala kuchochea uzalishaji wa ajira mpya hususan kwa vijana aidha mbali na ukuaji huu wa uchumi bado bara la Afrika limeendelea kukabiliwa na changamoto mbalimbali mbali, kama vile uhaba wa chakula viwango vikubwa vya ukosefu wa ajira, umasikini uliokithiri na ukosefu wa usawa kwenye jamii. Ni wazi kuwa bara letu bado linahitaji mageuzi makubwa katika nyanja zote muhimu za uzalishaji na maendeleo. Na haya ndio malengo na madhumuni ya ajenda ya maendeleo ya Afrika tunayoitaka ya mwaka 2063 ambayo imeweka malengo saba na hapa najelekeza kuyazungumzia malengo manne ambayo moja ni Afrika ambayo mafanikio yake yanajikita kwenye ukuaji jumuishi wa uchumi na maendeleo endelevu 
mbili Afrika yenye utengamano kisiasa wa kuzingatia fikra za kimajumui na mwelekeo wa kimapinduzi. Tatu, Afrika inayozingatia misingi ya utawala bora, demokrasia, haki za binadamu na utawala wa sheria. Na nne, Afrika ambayo maendeleo yake yanatokana na watu kwa kutumia vipaji vyao hususan wanawake, vijana pamoja na kutoa makuzi bora kwa watoto. Na hili ndilo lililo tuweka leo hapa. Washima viongozi, nimeona ni ataje malengo haya manne ili kuona uzito na dhima ya majukumu yaliyoko mbele yetu na kutafakari ni aina gani ya uongozi na sera zinazohitajika kuhakikisha tunafikia na kutimiza kwa ukamilifu malengo haya. Ni muhimu sisi kama viongozi tuhakikishe kwamba tunaangalia, tunatathmini na kusimamia mageuzi yote muhimu ili kuliwezesha bara hili litumie uwezo na rasilimali zake kujikomboa kiuchumi. Kama nilivyosema awali, mkutano huu unafanyika kwa wakati mwafaka. Hasa ikizingatiwa kwamba kwa sasa Afrika ndilo bara lenye vijana wengi zaidi. Takwimu zinaonesha kuwa ifikapo mwaka ishirini hamsini, Afrika itatoa nchi kumi zenye idadi kubwa zaidi ya vijana duniani. Kwa mujibu wa World Economic Forum, zaidi ya asilimia sitini ya watu wa barani Afrika ni vijana walio chini ya miaka ishirini na tano. Aidha inakadiriwa kuwa ifikapo mwaka ishirini thelathini. Afrika itakuwa na asilimia arbaina mbili ya vijana wote duniani. Na umri wa wastani wa nchi za Afrika ni chini ya miaka ishirini. Hii inatuonesha kwamba kuna mambo mengi ya kimaendeleo hususan kwenye mambo ya afya ili tuweze pia kukuza uh, wastani wa umri kwa Afrika. Hii inamaanisha kuwa bara letu ni bara lenye watoto na vijana wengi. Kwa tafsiri ya kidemografia habari hii ni nzuri na vile vile ni mbaya kwetu. Hali hii inaweza kuwa nzuri na yenye tija iwapo tutawekeza kwenye rasilimali watu kwa kuhakikisha uwepo wa afya bora, elimu bora yenye stadi za maisha ili kujenga nguvu kazi yenye tija kama ilivyo kwa wenzetu wa bara la Asia. Hatima yetu inaweza kuwa mbaya hivyo. Tutaongeza idadi ya vijana wasio na ujuzi, wasioajirika na vijana wa kujiingiza kwenye vitendo viovu vya kihalifu na uvunjifu wa amani. Hivyo basi kwetu sisi tuliopo hapa leo tujiulize je bara tulilolirithi kwa wasisi wasisi wetu walio tafuta uhuru wa Afrika ndilo bara tunalotaka kuwarithisha vizazi vijavyo au wajukuu wetu je Afrika tulayo ijenga leo ni yenye uchumi endelevu au uchumi unaoduma tukipata majibu hayo tutalijenga bara letu vyema zaidi vile vile majibu ya masuala haya yatupa mwelekeo wa sera zetu ni wazi kwa viongozi wenye maono ujenga sera zao kwenye maendeleo ya watu na kufuatiwa na maendeleo ya vitu na hapa niruhusu ninukuu maneno ya baba wa taifa hili la Tanzania miaka michache kabla kufariki kwake Mwalimu Julius Kambarage Nyerere wakati akihutubia mkutano wa umoja wa mataifa jijini New York alisema na hapa na mnukuu kwamba development is people people are the target creators and beneficiaries of any known anything known as development mwisho wa kunukuu kwa tafsiri rahisi alisema maendeleo ni watu watu ndio walengwa ndio wanzilishi na wanufaika wa chochote kinachoitwa maendeleo. Kwa mantiki hiyo hatuwezi kulikomboa bara letu kiuchumi kama hatutaelekeza nguvu zetu kwenye maendeleo ya rasilimali watu. Kwa kuwapa maarifa na ujuzi unaohitajika katika kuyatimia, kuyatumia na kuyabadilisha mazingira yao kwa manufaa yao. 
washimu wa viongozi tunapozungumzia uwekezaji katika rasilimali watu ni kuhakikisha kwamba uwekezaji unaanza tangu mtoto anapozaliwa kwa maana upatikanaji wa lishe bora na chanjo stahiki ili kuondoa udumavu ambao mara nyingi hupunguza kiwango cha uelewa na uwezo wa kusoma vizuri kwa watoto hao ili kuhakikisha tunaweka msingi mzuri wa elimu tunapaswa kuwa na maandalizi mazuri ya elimu na hasa elimu ya awali kwa ajili ya kuandaa watoto kimwili kiakili kiismu au kijinsia na kiubunifu jambo jingine ile elimu itoe matokeo chanya ni lazima kuwa na mitaala yenye kukidhi matakwa ya soko la ajira kwa mfano uwepo wa mapinduzi ya aina ya viwanda yameleta mabadiliko makubwa katika sekta zetu za afya, elimu, biashara, teknolojia pamoja na mahusiano na mwingiliano wa kijamii pamoja na usafiri na usafirishaji. Hivyo basi, ni wajibu wetu kuhakikisha Afrika hatuachwi nyuma. Tunazitumia fursa hivi vizuri. Hatuachwi nyuma kama ilivyokuwa kwenye mapinduzi haya um, ya matatu yaliyopita mapinduzi ya kwanza ya pili na ya tatu haya ya nne Afrika ni wakati wetu kuyatumia vizuri Mwasisi wa taifa huru la Afrika Kusini hati mzee Nelson Mandela alisema na mimi namnukuu education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world akimaanisha kuwa elimu ndio silaha yenye nguvu zaidi naweza kutumika kubadilisha ulimwengu na hapa nichukue fursa hii kueleza umma huu baadhi ya hatua ambazo nchi yetu Tanzania imechukua ili kukuza na kuendeleza rasilimali watu moja tumeamua kutenga fedha nyingi kwa ajili ya afu mbalimbali za lishe na huduma za afya ya uzazi wa mama na mtoto na katika hili mimi kama rais wa nchi Nimeingia mikataba na wakuu wa mikoa kila mkuu wa mkoa kuhakikisha anawajibika ipasavyo katika eneo hili Lakini la pili ni kuanzisha vituo vya elimu ya awali yani early childhood development centers ambao tunaendelea kuvi, kuvieneza nchi nzima La tatu ni mapitio na maboresho ya sera ya elimu mitaala na programu za mafunzo ili ziendane na mazingira pamoja na mahitaji ya sasa ya maendeleo. La nne ni uanzishwaji wa mfuko wa kusaidia kaya maskini ujulikanao kama Tanzania Social Action Fund TASAF. Lengo la mfuko huu ni kupunguza umaskini na kuboresha upatikanaji wa huduma za afya na elimu. Tangu mwaka elfu mbili zaidi ya kaya milioni moja zimenufaika na zaidi ya miradi moja ya miundo mbinu mbalimbali ya elimu, afya, maji safi na salama, kilimo na mazingira, njia za usafiri na usafirishaji zimetekelezwa. Jengine ni uanzishwaji wa programu ya elimu bila malipo kwenye ngazi za elimu ya awali, elimu ya msingi na hadi sekondari. Watoto wetu wanasoma bila kulipa. Lakini la sita ni uwekezaji kwenye elimu ya ufundi na mafunzo ya mali yani vocational education and training ikiwa ni pamoja na kutoa ujuzi bobezi ili kuongeza tija ushindani na uwezo wa ndani katika kutumia rasilimali za nchi yetu saba kuwezesha vijana kiuchumi kupitia mikopo inayotolewa na halmashauri mikopo hii tunatoa asilimia nne tumezitaka halmashauri kutenga asilimia kumi ya mapato yao ya ndani Asilimia nne inatumika kwa kuwakopesha vijana. Asilimia nne inatumika kwa kuwakopesha wanawake. Na asilimia mbili inatumika kwa kuwakopesha watu wenye ulemavu. Jambo la nane ni kuruhusu watoto walioacha masomo hasa wa kike waliopata ujauzito kuweza kurudi tena shuleni na kuendelea na masomo yao. Na hapa nataka niseme kwamba Jaribio hili lilianza kule Zanzibar na furaha kusema kwamba kuna watoto ambao walirudi 
kuanzia form 1 kidato cha 4 wamemaliza university na sasa wako vizuri. Kwa hiyo ni fursa nzuri ya kuwarudisha watoto shuleni. Lakini pia kupitia wizara yetu ya kilimo tuna program maalum inayoitwa Building a Better Tomorrow kwa ajili ya vijana kujishughulisha na shughuli za kilimo, ufugaji na uvuvi ili kujenga vyema sekta ya kilimo na kufanya sekta hii iweze kuchangia kwa asilimia kumi kutoka asilimia nne inayochangia sasa hivi katika uchumi wetu wa taifa. Waheshimiwa viongozi, nimezungumza masuala mengi na kwa kirefu. Sanaomba mniruhusu ni ataje kwa mahususi na kwa mutasari. Maeneo muhimu yanaweza kutusaidia kuboresha rasilimali watu ya Afrika ili atusaidie kuongeza mijadala yetu tukiwa hapa. Kwanza lazima tujidhatiti kutumia rasilimali watu tulionayo kwa manufaa kwa manufaa yetu kwa maana ya reaping the demographic dividend idadi kubwa ya vijana tulionayo Afrika ni fursa ya pekee kwa ajili ya mageuzi ya kiuchumi badili ya kuacha vijana hawa wa hizo bahari wapigwe njiani wazamishwe kwamba wanakwenda Europe kutafuta maisha bora. Maisha bora watayapata Afrika tukiwaendeleza. Lakini la pili lazima tuwafundishe watoto wetu kuhusu uzazi wa mpangilio. Kama nilivyosema Afrika population yetu ni kubwa sana na population hii inaweza ikatuletea tija au ikatuletea Uh, mambo yasiyofaa kama hatukuitumia vizuri. La tatu kuongeza manufaa kutokana na elimu na mafunzo tunayoyatoa katika nchi zetu. Tuhakikishe elimu tunayoitoa inawapa uwezo vijana wetu kuongeza tija na kujenga uchumi wetu. Nne, kuongeza uwekezaji katika sekta nyingine zinazoleta ufanisi katika huduma za elimu na afya. Ni lazima kuwekeza katika miundombinu kama vile njia za usafiri na usafirishaji, kuengeza nishati au umeme, maji safi na usafi wa mazingira. Haya yote tukiyaboresha yanaweza kutusukuma katika kutoa huduma za afya na elimu ili ziwafikie watu wote na ziwe endelevu. Jambo la tano ni utekelezaji wa programu za hifadhi ya jamii katika uzalishaji yani implementing productive social safety nets programs um, katika nchi zetu waheshimiwa viongozi kuzifungua fursa katika kuitumia rasilimali watu ya Afrika ni wajibu wa kimaadili na ni sharti muhimu la kiuchumi kwani kwa kuwekeza katika hifadhi ya jamii kuongeza rasilimali fedha kwenye elimu na maendeleo ya rasilimali watu tunaweza kuijenga Afrika yenye mafanikio jumuishi kwa hivyo inatupasa tuunganishe nguvu za serikali asasi za kiraia na sekta binafsi ili kufanya uwekezaji unaohitajika na kujenga mazingira mazingira wezeshi ya kukua na kuendelea kwa rasilimali hii muhimu ambayo ni watu wetu vijana wetu kwa pamoja Tunaweza kujenga mustakabali mwema wa Afrika kwa kuhakikisha ndoto za vijana wetu zinatimia. Washimu viongozi wakati nikihitimisha nisisitize kwamba swala la maendeleo ya rasilimali watu wa Afrika haliwezi kuja kwa kubahatisha na halina mbadala lazima tuwe na mipango madhubuti ya kuhakikisha rasilimali watu Afrika inaendelezwa kwa manufaa ya bara hili na kwa maendeleo yetu. Ndugu zangu, baada ya kusema hayo, ni seme wakati ni sasa inawezekana kila mmoja atekeleze jukumu lake kwa nafasi yake tuendeleze bara letu Afrika. Asante sana kwa kunisikiliza. Asante sana. May I request you to stand up and we clap our hands.
please be seated asante sana wakati ni sasa inawezekana can we all say that the time is now it is possible the time is now thank you so much your excellency for your leadership and for bringing the continent together for this important human capital heads of state summit here in dar es salaam tanzania excellencies up next we have a video that is going to set the stage on how focusing on learning and skills will help propel human capital-led economic growth in Africa. After the video, I will have the honor to invite World Bank Vice President for Human Development, Dr. Mamta Murti, to give us a deeper reflection of this video. But for now, distinguished delegates, excellences, is the video. Thank you. The last 30 years saw a largely positive economic story for sub-Saharan Africa. Economies grew and the proportion of the population living below the poverty line declined. Africa made great progress in health outcomes and life expectancy has grown over the last 50 years. Child mortality declined and the chances of a 15-year-old surviving to age 60 improved. Senegal and Ghana reduced stunting, which is defined as impaired growth and development of children due to poor nutrition, repeated infection and inadequate psychological stimulation. Stunting affects learning, productivity and leads to low wages in adulthood. Liberia, Rwanda and Malawi were able to reduce under five mortality by two-thirds in the last two decades. Over the last two decades, Kenya and the Seychelles have made consistent strategic investments in health and education with significant results. Select countries record higher secondary school access and completion rates than the regional average. This raises the future productivity of current cohorts as measured by the Human Capital Index. Paired with favorable demographics, these countries are well positioned to reap a demographic dividend driven by high levels of human capital to accompany other investments. However, there were significant differences across the countries in national income, natural resources, fragility and conflict, and urbanization, among others. A key feature of Africa's growth experience has been the diversity driven by regional heterogeneity, with some countries growing faster than others. As these developments progressed, its population grew from around 180 million people in 1950 to more than a billion now and is projected to grow to slightly more than 2 billion people by the late 2040s. Although the region has grown economically, this was not enough to deliver rapid per capita income growth. Africa is still the poorest region and lags in key human capital indicators like learning, out-of-school children, stunting, and the proportion of youth with appropriate skills. Still, a significant proportion of children on the continent cannot read, more than half of whom are women, which further limits their participation in the labor market. Africa is at a critical juncture in its economic growth journey in a rapidly changing world, driven by technology and digital advancement. Jobs will be digitally focused and require new skills. While global populations will continue to grow, the overall growth rate is slowing and the world's population is aging. However, Sub-Saharan Africa's unique demographics offer both hopes and risks. With timely strategic investment, Sub-Saharan Africa has a real opportunity to use its biggest asset, its people, as a key driver for growth. Hope can be seen through a potential economic and demographic dividend with changing dependency ratios. But with a rapidly increasing population of young people and workers who will need education and jobs, 
Sub-Saharan Africa is the only region with an increasing working age population. The youth population in India and China are declining, while that in Sub-Saharan Africa is increasing. By 2075, Africa will stand out as an extraordinary hub of human activity, with almost a third of all people on Earth projected to call this continent home. The working age population is surging at remarkable speeds. By 2035, there will be 450 million more workers joining the labor market, with only 100 million jobs being available at the current rate. Sustained economic growth, fueled by a youthful population, will not be realized automatically. It requires private sector partnerships and bundles of multi-sector, time-sensitive policies for job creation. These policies must equip youth with relevant skills in STEM to meet the demands of future jobs. These will be policies that keep people at the center. Strategic and sustained human capital investments can accelerate economic growth build resilient systems, and strengthen social cohesion. The East Asian Tiger countries, like South Korea, Malaysia, and Singapore, demonstrate that sustained strategic investment in human capital contributed to between one-third and half of all economic growth. The miracle of the East Asian growth story highlights the importance of investing in people. There was an assumption that these economies grew before the governments had enough resources to invest in people. But there is clear evidence that investments in public health and education predated faster economic growth. A healthier, better educated population will contribute to faster economic growth. As families become more assured that their children were likely to survive and thrive, they chose to have smaller families ensuring that households and governments could increase investment. More educated parents were better skilled and could contribute more to the labor market. The experience of East Asian Tigers makes our understanding of what drives development more complete. The old consensus was that investments in physical capital, such as dams, roads, and irrigation systems, were the main drivers of economic growth. But the rates of return varied from country to country. This variability was attributed to supporting economic policies, including trade, regional integration, and enterprise ownership. We have learned that robust economic growth and development are a combination of smart physical infrastructure investments, appropriate economic policies, and timely and sustained human capital investments. We've covered how investment in human capital accelerates economic growth. So let's take a closer look at the next important accelerator in human capital, resilient systems. Robust development means countries are building national systems that can withstand shocks like economic downturns, debt crisis, conflict, learning losses, epidemics, droughts and floods. Despite Sub-Saharan Africa's last 20 years of variable economic growth, the region has seen frequent shocks and setbacks. The COVID-19 pandemic is not the first health shock in the region. The Ebola epidemic devastated parts of Africa, and before that, HIV or AIDS had a substantial and long-term negative impact on all aspects of development. Shocks at any stage of life, be they economic, climate-related or health-focused, increase population vulnerability and erode human capital. Shocks put households at risk economically, requiring a more significant governmental response to help stabilize the economy. Sub-Saharan Africa is also especially vulnerable to climate change, which will likely be more devastating to poorer households. All of these shocks disrupt and reduce investments in human capital test government systems, and stretch meager financing. Human capital builds the resolve of households to withstand climate shocks and contribute to a more livable planet. Human capital investment for system resilience can include social protection systems, 
targeting assistance, social work and services programs, adaptive education systems, and resilient public health systems. Investments in human capital also help equalize opportunity. Research shows that countries with lower levels of inequality tend to experience faster growth and address inequality. More equitable human capital endowments are important growth drivers, and highly unequal countries experience growth slowdown upon reaching middle income status. A key lesson is that strategic human capital spending can reduce inequality. A misdirected spending on human capital, on the other hand, can increase inequality, hence affecting growth. The evidence is clear. Equal countries tend to experience faster growth. Human capital investments are central to strengthening social cohesion, our final important accelerator. Social cohesion is critical for every country, but is especially important in the context of violence, conflict, and fragility. The delivery of education, healthcare, water sanitation, and justice and security provide the glue that binds a state and a society. At a basic level, providing a range of quality social services that address the population's needs is an important step in building trust in the role of government. To strengthen social cohesion, service delivery solutions should address and correct inequalities across income groups, ethnicities, religions, and linguistic lines. Nations that make smart and equitable investments in human capital through robust education, health and social programs, accelerate growth and ensure that women are fully empowered to contribute to economic growth. Evidence shows that strategic investments in human capital and people set the stage for economic growth. Africa's future depends on the choices made at this juncture in its history. The increasing proportion of young people need to be skilled and the right policies are needed to ensure these young people will have jobs. We can shape our future with collective focus, resolve, partnerships and investment. Africa is at a unique moment in its history. How can we partner to ensure Africa reaps its demographic dividend for growth and jobs? Thank you very much. And from the video and as we gather to celebrate these achievements and successes that our nations have made so far, I would now like to invite to the podium Dr. Mamta Murthy to give more context on our continent. Distinguished delegates, your excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for Dr. Mamta Murthy. On the, on the movie that you just, show, uh, just saw. And uh, I'm going to offer you just five reflections. Um, the first thing I would like you to take away from the movie is that um, human capital is an incredibly important source of economic growth. So if you look at the difference between rich and poor countries, anywhere between one third now, you know, researchers always quibble about methodology and, and that kind of thing. And, and some will question uh, how much of what is being attributed to human capital can actually be, uh, is actually the result of infrastructure or trade policy or other things. But even if we accept all those quibbles, at least one third of the difference between rich and poor countries can be attributed to human capital. And that's a huge difference. It's also a difference that we know we can work on. And that's why it's a very actionable, um, it's a very actionable item. And I'm delighted to be addressing heads of government, vice presidents, presidents, and others, because we can act on this together. The second thing I want to say is that there has been progress in Africa on the issue of human capital. We heard from a number of delegations, from ministers, 
uh, there has been remarkable progress. Uh, l let me give you one statistic. If we look at the population of sub-Saharan Africa that is over 25 years of age, right, so they've completed their education, well, the average years of schooling has gone up from three and a half years of schooling to over five and a half years of schooling in the past 20 years. That's an enormous increase in just years of schooling. Remember, for a population that has been growing quite rapidly. So, so I hope that fixes in your, uh, in your mind that there has been huge progress. The challenge, of course, lies with the quality of schooling. The quality of schooling is not as high as it should be. Again, let me, uh, if we look at children in school today in sub-Saharan Africa, they can expect, because of the expansion in schooling that many of you in the audience have been responsible for, a child today in sub-Saharan Africa can expect to, uh, to achieve at least nine years of schooling because of the policies that are in place. But because the quality of schooling is poor, about 45 to 50 percent of that is lost. So the equivalent number of years of schooling is not nine, it's four and a half. It's about half of that because very little is being learned in school. Children can progress through school, but it doesn't mean that they leave school having learned everything they should. To contrast that with uh, another continent uh, that I know well and Victoria knows well, East Asia and the Pacific, an average child today in East Asia and the Pacific can expect to go through 12 years of schooling. There too, there are issues with quality. So about 30% of that schooling is lost because the quality is not high. But if you take away 30% from, from 12, that's still nine years of schooling. So, so in Africa, there are two challenges, both to increase the years of schooling and to improve quality. That's a double challenge. That's a difficult challenge because it's a double challenge. It requires resources and it requires improving learning in school. I'm going to come to the resources, but let me first talk about improving learning in school because as I said before, this is an actionable thing. This is something that can be done. There is a lot that has been learned within Africa and from outside Africa on how to improve learning in school. Let me touch upon just a few things, actually drawing on the excellent panel discussion that we had yesterday with ministers of health, ministers of education, and ministers of labor and, and social welfare. I'm gonna mention only three things. These are not silver bullets, but they are, they are ideas I want you to take away. First, learning happens in school, but children have to be prepared to learn before they come to school. When we're talking about learning in school, it's very important to build the foundations. And the foundation of, of learning, all learning, is being able to read. Being able to read is the thing that needs to be emphasized in the early years, in, in primary school. And, and there's a lot that can be done by simplifying the curriculum and focusing it on the foundational elements of reading. And there are many countries in Africa that are doing this. There's Kenya, there's Mozambique, there's, there's Niger, there's Edo State of Nigeria, there's Rwanda. These are very good um, things to be doing and are worthy of replication. But beyond wanting to teach the fundamentals, it doesn't help if the teacher is not in the classroom, if the, um, if the teacher is not supported in delivering learning in the classroom. And some of the ministers yesterday spoke about this. Teacher presence and support to the teacher for delivering uh, the foundational elements of learning in the classroom are extremely important. Um, and, and finally, there is the issue of language. And um, President Saluhu mentioned this in her, in her remarks. Africa is a continent of many languages Many children come to school speaking a, speaking a language at home and then being expected to read in a different language in school. 
So there is an issue around uh, teaching reading in the mother tongue, which, which is still a challenge um, in, in the continent. So I, I leave you with just these three ideas, foundational learning, emphasizing reading, supporting the teacher to deliver uh, learning in the classroom, both by being present and by being supported with the right coaching, with the right in-service training, with the right materials. And finally, the language of instruction, the first language that, it, that the child encounters in school. Now let me talk about readiness for learning. Children arrive in school, but they need to be ready to learn. And that is where nutrition in the early years, that's where cognitive development and stimulation before entering um, school matters. This is the reason why pre-primary school matters and early childhood development matters. Many countries have made progress in trying to expand early childhood development, but it's not enough. Yesterday, we heard a very good example from the minister from Rwanda who talked about low-cost, community-based expansion of early childhood development. This is very promising. Uh, this expansion can occur rapidly, and it can have an impact on both nutrition and cognitive readiness to learn when children enter, um, enter school. One doesn't need a Mercedes-Benz of early childhood development. One needs the right interventions in, in early childhood development in order to have readiness for school. Um, the, the last point I want to make is really about um, uh, post-basic education and, and secondary and, and TVET and higher education. We had some discussions about this yesterday. Um, it's if human capital is built through early childhood development, through good basic education, uh, young people still need skills that are relevant for the labor market. We've seen a lot of expansion in, in post-secondary education, which is not particularly relevant to the needs of the labor market. A stronger emphasis on relevance by involving uh, um, the private sector, involving business leaders in helping devising a curriculum that is relevant to the needs of the labor market is extremely important. But the skills that are needed go beyond technical skills. They also are relate, the, the skills that are needed are also behavioral. They're also, uh, they also relate to things like teamwork, critical thinking, problem solving, the, the things that are needed for the fourth industrial revolution, as, as uh, um, Her Excellency uh, Samia Saluhu mentioned. Um, again, this is an area that can be worked on. Uh, we had very good examples from many of the ministers yesterday on the way in which post-secondary education is being linked to the needs of the labor market. I want to move on um, to the issue of resources because, I, as I said at the outset, um, Africa faces a double challenge, the need to both increase the number of years of schooling but also increase quality. Many of the elements of quality actually do not involve a huge additional fiscal cost. It's the expansion of access which is costly. And this is where the need for resources comes. Now, um, there's, uh, the majority of resources for the expansion in access to education will have to come domestically. And for this, countries need to strengthen domestic resource mobilization, as well as increase the priority given to education. But beyond the volume of resources, there's also the issue of resource use and effectiveness of resource use. It's very easy to talk about waste and, and because uh, sectors like education and health and social protection take up such a large share of the government budget, it's very easy to say, oh, well, there's a lot of wasteful spending. To my mind, what is wasteful is if a child is in the classroom and is not ready to learn. That is why making sure that early childhood investments are made are very, is very important because this is what makes spending on basic education effective. What's wasteful is spending money on basic education if children are not learning. 
That's why the spending that needs to happen on basic education needs to be directed towards achieving stronger and better learning outcomes. Similarly, um, uh, if there's spending on post-secondary and it doesn't result in the kinds of skills that are needed for uh, young people to acquire jobs on learning and employability, to my mind, is a very good way of approaching the issue of effectiveness of resource use. Um, I want to conclude, um, uh, and, and I want to say that what, uh, what has made me very enthusiastic over these past two days is the commitment that I have seen from everybody, from national authorities, from, from the private sector, from, from development partners, to, to make a huge dent on this issue of improving um, outcomes and expanding access uh, to services. This makes me very positive and, and, and very confident. We've also heard excellent examples of things that work. We, we, uh, the panel yesterday, I believe, was very inspiring to all of us. My wish uh, at the end of this summit is to, that everybody goes away with the, with the um, intention that the examples that we heard now, which are sporadic and are, are uh, uncommon, uh, my, my wish is that these become common and that when we meet in three or four or five years' time, many of these examples are replicated. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Morty, for your insightful thoughts that provides a lot of um, things to ponder on for the coming couple of hours. But also, it really sets up uh, well for the next panel discussion where we are going to have our distinguished heads of states to ponder on Africa's prosperity depends on its youthful demographics. How can Africa utilize its young population fully to achieve Agenda 2063. Excellencies, I'm honored now to invite to the stage the following heads of state for the first panel discussion, as I'd mentioned, looking onto Africa's prosperity that depends on its youthful demographics. How can Africa utilize its young population fully to achieve Agenda 2063? Allow me and join me to welcome to the stage Your Excellency Philippe Jacinto Nyusi, the President, Republic of Mozambique. And as he comes, may I also invite His Excellency Dr. Lazarus Makathi Chakwera, President, Republic of Malawi. As it comes to the stage, Excellences, Delegates, ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for His Excellency Carlos Manuel Villanova, President, Democratic Republic of Sao Tome and Principe. And as it comes, last but not least, I would like to invite to the stage and let's put our hands together for His Excellency Olavo Avelino Garcia Correra, Deputy Prime Minister, Republic of Cap Verde. And to moderate this wonderful session, allow me, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, to turn the floor over to CNBC Africa's Editor-in-Chief, Mr. Godfrey Mutitswa, to moderate the next two sessions. Let's put our hands together for Mr. Godfrey of CNBC. Very good morning, ladies.
ladies and gentlemen, your excellencies. I am hoping I have uh, observed all the diplomatic uh, notes that are important. I'm a storyteller, and I'm very privileged here, and I really feel a sense of belonging to be asked to uh, this august gathering on a very important topic for our country. Yes, our country, Africa. I feel it's one of those uh, occasions uh, where I can say uh, without contradiction that Africa is a country for our problems are similar. We, as you have heard all of you this morning, have the lowest average human capital index rating in the world at 89%. And our challenges are common. All of us, wherever you look, we face rising inflation, we face rising indebtedness in our households, in our governments, and we also know that, in addition to that, we know that inflation and unemployment are increasing. But at the same time, consistently, consistently throughout the continent, we also have the largest and the youngest population in the world, which is what brings us here today. Your Excellencies, let me spell out what my role is today here. By the end of this session, I've been told I must get a measurable commitment from all of you, just one, on advancing our youth agenda to achieve the long spoken about youth dividend. I also have been instructed to provide each of you with five minutes, and I know this is a particularly difficult one because you have important messages that you need to communicate. But for the purpose of getting the messages that we would like, that are going to be used to fill all the gaps that we had here this morning, I've been given five minutes for all of you. And uh, you will see me lifting my eyebrow, it might be a shoulder, it might be a grunting. I will certainly do my best to try to live within the five minutes. But I do not want to leave the important messages that you need to leave with me here. Otherwise, I will be in trouble. And then, lastly, out of each of you, I'm also hoping that I will be able to get three takeaways that I share with the organizers of our debate today. So please, Your Excellencies, Please help me. I promise to vote for you when you call for the reform of the United Nations in New York the next time you are at UNGA. Let me start first of all uh, with uh, the first set of questions. And uh, this question, I am posing it to Your Excellency, uh, the President of uh, Mozambique. President Philip uh, Nusse. Let me just get to your question. My notes are letting me down here. Okay. I have it. Your Excellency, we know that in each of our countries, half the population is female. We also know that uh, our ladies are the most entrepreneurial on the continent. The statistics are there actually from the African Development Bank. And we also know that they are very, very responsible with their finances. So I want to know what you are doing to improve the female labor force participation. And I dare say even in that entrepreneurial field as well where they are laboring without participation and beating the men, what more can we do to get the ladies to be more participative than they are currently? Thank you. Allow me also to use the official language of Mozambique, Portuguese. Samani ndugu zangu tutasema kireno leo washauri nataka wananchi pia Mozambiki waisikie asante ni eh, caros colegas chefes de estado chefes das delegações doutora Mônica 
vice-presidente do Banco Mundial, todos os presentes. Primeiro, quero agradecer a oportunidade que os organizadores, neste caso concreto a Tanzânia, e o Banco Mundial nos dá para podermos partilhar experiências no âmbito do, de capital humano. Esta é matéria fundamental porque é a base do desenvolvimento dos nossos países. Eu vou escolher o caso de Moçambique como caso de estudo. Nós, em Moçambique, agora somos cerca de 32 bilhões de moçambicanos. Destes, 52% são jovens, mas também 51% são mulheres. A pergunta que me coloca concretamente o que fazemos para empoderamento, para o desenvolvimento do capital humano, concretamente para a mulher, é uma pergunta que não é isolada. Precisamos de teorias do que é preciso fazer. Primeiro, precisam, precisamos de garantir a vida, a boa vida ou a vida de qualidade para todos os nossos compatriotas, mas, sobretudo, para as novas gerações. Para isso, é preciso facilitar as condições, como acabamos de ver aqui.